Today I'm in Birmingham, more specifically the village of Bourneville. Now that may sound familiar to some of you, even if you've never been. The dark taste. Now, and for a hundred years. The one and only Bourneville dark taste. Keep it dark. This little village is home to the factory of the world's second largest confectionery company, Cadbury. But first, let's go back to the very beginning. John Cadbury was born to a wealthy family in Birmingham in 1801. As a Quaker, his career options were limited. In those days, Quakers weren't allowed an advanced education, so he couldn't go to university. Also, Quakers are pacifists, so he couldn't join the military. So he settled on opening up his own grocer's shop in the centre of Birmingham, where he sold cocoa and drinking chocolate, which were seen as tasty and even healthy alternatives to alcohol, which Quakers are generally against. John Cadbury's drinking chocolate was a success, so he expanded to a nearby factory to produce it commercially. And then a few years later, he moved into an even bigger factory as the company started producing bars of chocolate. But by 1861, John Cadbury's health was declining, and so he retired and handed over the business to his sons, Richard and George. But they faced a significant challenge. The company was going bust. Richard apparently said that if it ever made a profit of £1,000 a year, he would retire a happy man. Being from a wealthy family, the brothers pumped some of their own money into the company and began to improve the quality of their products. They did this by using a fancy new press from the Netherlands, and it led to them exporting their chocolate around the world. They also started linking their products to certain occasions. They made chocolate Easter eggs and chocolates in heart-shaped boxes for Valentine's Day. This was something that hadn't really been done before. By 1878, the Cadbury brothers decided they needed an even bigger factory. So instead of finding a place in the built-up industrial areas of Birmingham, they looked further afield and found a greenfield site in the villages surrounding the city. It was the perfect location. It had access to both a canal and a train line, both of which were used for deliveries. There was also plenty of room for expansion. In the 1870s, the Cadbury brothers set up shop in Bourneville. There were many other makers of chocolate, but the Cadburys had to do it differently. Not bad. Not bad at all, Margaret. They'd set themselves a simple aim to create the finest plain chocolate of their age. They succeeded. Appropriately enough, they called it... Bourneville. And now there is Bourneville Selection, a collection of no fewer than 14 carefully selected centres brought together to give you probably the finest plain chocolate assortment in the world. Cadbury's Bourneville Selection. All the qualities of a bygone age. The site was named Bourneville, and construction began in 1879. But it wasn't just the factory that was being built. After years spent in the industrial slums of the busy city, George Cadbury had a vision of housing his workers in a place that was green, clean and spacious. He once said, no man ought to be condemned to live in a place where a rose cannot grow. At first, houses for a handful of senior employees were built at Bourneville, but as the years went on, it expanded. More semi-detached houses and cottages were built. They had gardens, and there were parks, football pitches, swimming pools, and other sports facilities. No pubs, though, because the Cadburys were Quakers. All these things were pretty unfamiliar to people who'd spent much of their lives working in factories in a crowded, dirty city. Also, being from Birmingham, they probably weren't used to not having a pub nearby. George Cadbury also later worked on the Garden City movement, which has brought the UK places like Bedford Park, Wellwyn Garden City, and Milton Keynes. Thank God for him. 
Now, usually this would be the part of the story where I tell you that Bourneville has turned from some utopia into a capitalist nightmare. The type of place where an autocratic homeowners association dictates that kids can't play with balls and grass can't grow to more than three centimetres tall. But actually, it frequently features on lists of the best places to live in the UK, and it's still really quite pretty. Although the Cadbury factory itself has partially become a tourist attraction, so I suppose that's one thing. The factory is still in operation though, and it's one of the biggest employers in Birmingham. As an attraction, Cadbury World is nothing amazing, but you do get given some chocolate and can meet the famous gorilla that can play Phil Collins on the drums. There was also someone dressed up as the Caramel Bunny. Haven't you heard of Cadbury's Caramel? See, is the thick Cadbury's milk chocolate melts with that dreamy caramel. Who's obviously the most attractive character in the Cadbury cinematic universe, followed closely by Bertie Bassett, of course. But I had to contain my excitement and remind myself that that smooth, sensual voiceover work was done by Miriam Margulies. Fucking hell! Shit! This is a fucking nightmare! If the royals are more your thing, they also have on display some tins to commemorate weddings, jubilees, anniversaries and so on. Although I can't imagine why this one was so hidden away. 